guys welcome back bdckr here we're back with season 4 episode 16 of our q and a and t series perfect square season 4 is 16th episode four mm, squared true okay getting right into the questions the first one comes from i'm batman all in caps and they say i wish they added an offline money generator and okay i guess this isn't a question but it's an idea that we can address yeah, I, I i this is a t part this is just talking there's yeah, no I, question there's no answer <laughs> I want this to be a quote from the Michael Keaton Batman. I'm Batman. Um, so I used to think this. I used to agree with you when I first started playing Injustice 2 Mobile, and then I kept on playing Injustice 2 Mobile, and then it it, it actually seemed like it was getting worse because what it's doing is it's encouraging you not to play. Mm -hmm. It becomes one more thing to worry about in terms of managing your time, so that when they had contracts or whatever they were, and you or missions. That's right. Yeah. And you'd have to come back at a certain time to reload the next mission, and if you didn't, you'd lose out on the opportunity of generating more stuff. Yeah. And I don't know. I I used to be of two minds, and now I'm mostly of one mind, where anything that encourages you not to play is a bad thing. Yeah, the problem is it's such a kind of free-to-play style mechanic that I think it's actually really good the way that they've handled it, Yeah. Um, where you really get rewarded for playing and directly for money and that's it yeah and the like being rewarded for that like offline stuff and like that kind of thing would maybe come with upgrades obviously or some like like systems for for managing it and it would yeah. just tether you to the game in a worse way where right now what tethers you to the game energy keeps you away and doesn't let you play infinitely until you, you've got enough recharge cards but in general stuff um doesn't right. keep you coming back to the game over and over again um at specific times or at super regular intervals really the most often you need to come back is every week or couple of weeks depending on whether you're doing online or challenges yeah. and i think if you put in other methods for generating whatever the currency is yeah then you can't expect the cost of things to stay the same so that when you put in more mechanisms then it means that you're going to have to participate in more of them in order to buy the things that you want yeah they've got a good balance right now and i think Although it takes a lot of play to get stuff, for mm -hmm. sure, mm -hmm. uh, especially to get everything, I think there's the the speed that you get stuff is the right speed for at least a lot of the early game. Um, for a full completion account, you almost need glitches. Right. But in le if you're not going for a full completed account, I think the, the speed is okay for a trickle of new content to keep you with right. new and interesting stuff every once in a while. Right. And you really get to like have that sense of like earning it, I think. I think they could be a little bit cheaper with some stuff. I think maybe gear could be cheaper or augments could be cheaper in uh, the amount of time played. But yeah. other than that, I think the characters are actually at a decent point. And I think yeah. a lot of the, the purchasing, a lot of the cost of stuff is tuned in a way that I'm actually okay with. All right. I can't, I can't find anything to add to that. No. Yeah. No. So there we go. Our next question comes from Phoenix23. And they say, I literally jumped up after seeing the new update and yelled, yes! I'm so happy that the devs are still grinding updates out. See, I'm realizing now, I say question, this is another comment that we're just going to talk about. Well, this is why it's so important that it's a QA and a and T. Yeah, because we're, we're pedants. <laughs> yes, we we're are. We're pedantic about it. So this is this is just talking. Uh, Neither of these... Normally, it's people being um, the, the things that we address. Yeah. Uh, these, these are some real kind of just like positive and interesting stuff. Yeah, they're, they're takeoff yeah, points. They're good, they're a, good. A, a yeah, they're just stuff conversation talk starter. About. Yeah. So on the one hand, it's a pretty bare bones update, right? It's one piece of new gear. But on the other hand, all right, so they patched the power credit glitch. Yeah. The update came a lot earlier than I would have expected mm -hmm. um, based on how often they average it, which is every two and a half months. Yeah. So those are actually really good signs. All right, so here's the thing. You probably don't think patching glitches is good, but to me, it's a nice indicator that they're still interested in maintaining the game. And still doing active work. Right. Um, and to me, that's even a better indicator than new content, since you have no idea when the new content was created. They could have st stockpiled a bunch of stuff that they're dribbling out a bit at a time. And the yeah. fact that they're addressing something that's current means there is activity now. Yeah. So I, it's not great that there's no glitch, but it is great that it's an indicator of their attention. Yeah, because when they were bringing out content fast it seemed like there was always something new yes uh and there's there's nothing to there's nothing to indicate that they didn't just keep working at that pace for a couple months as they were slowing stuff down and now we're just sitting on their laurels and just releasing yes. that stuff a yes. little bit at a time yeah. Yeah. so because we know that they patched the glitch and that they're they basically use the piece of new content as kind of a reward for updating they use that as the the actual justification for updating right um we know that they both have 
content that they can send out um, off schedule and that there's people actively working on the game still. Yep. And so those are both significant. Yep. Even though um, it's not inherently the same team that yep. works on um, new content, uh, you'd imagine that the glitch team for like just continuity of work is probably a same or similar team just mm -hmm. for their ability to patch stuff quick. It's probably yep. not somebody that they're just bringing in specifically to patch stuff. So that's right. good. It means that there's still an Injustice mobile dev team, even if that's not the only thing that they're... Right focusing their yep. interests on which yep. is that, that's a, that's a, it's good a sign. definitely good sign yeah so there we go i think that's everything yep our next question comes from subscription sam oh this is one in a series of a bunch that we're going to talk about youtubing in general yeah and this isn't the only person that's asked this question this is just the one that we've decided to say here because yep. we get them every once in a while uh have you ever considered getting an apple device to see what glitches work on ios i think you would get a lot more views and then three question marks so that's technically the question then yeah um so e listen all right so here's the thing you're asking if we've ever considered it yeah we've considered it the problem is that um listen if let's say we doubled our views yeah which is unlikely because there's still people who are already on ios devices that are watching yeah our most already. recent patron um is ios only and they say that's it's for true tips. so yeah you know definitely there yeah. are ios users who are watching like our content so let's say we doubled our views and we doubled our YouTube revenue, it would take maybe about six months to cover the cost of the device. Yeah. And it would take more than twice as much playing because we'd have to build up an account, we'd be starting from scratch, and then test all the glitches on iOS separately, completely separately from Android. Yeah. So here's the thing. I can't even be bothered to play Injustice 2 anymore or Mortal Kombat or Immortals. And we did play them for a while. It, they're just not worth the time. And there's really no cost of entry there. Yeah. Like, we've already got the device, we've already got the accounts, and we've already built them up. And at some point, we just can't, to, to maintain any kind of proficiency mm -hmm. with both glitches and the gameplay, eh, it, it costs way more than uh, it's probably worth. So the short answer is we've considered it, and it's probably never going to happen. Yeah, just because the, at the end of the day, the, the views aren't actually the most important stuff to us. We do it because it's fun. Yeah, and agreed. Uh, buying an iOS device, developing an account, testing everything, uh, ba basically just to do due diligence for glitches, seems to me str like entirely in the oh. category of not fun. Entirely oh, yeah. in the category of thinking about this like work. That would totally kill the joy of this. Yeah. So the, I mean, there's a lot of other more kind of numerical reasons, a lot more yeah. uh, kind of easily justifiable to, uh, you know, oh, you can make more views, make more money. Uh, like all that stuff like that there, there's a reason why that doesn't actually uh, matter the same way but the other reason is just like this is fun uh, that doesn't sound like fun right yep, yep. yeah uh, oh and I, I don't like Apple devices I, I don't I want to avoid buying Apple devices in general simply because of some of the things they've done and we've talked about it before but the most obvious one is where they take their device and change their uh, charging port and, and it's, it's proprietary. still proprietary yeah, yeah. consistently so, proprietary so like it it's okay if you have iOS. We're obviously not faulting you for it. Uh, just not going to be a thing that we probably yeah. do. It's not a decision mm -hmm. that we're going to make, and it just would be... It would be a pretty big decision to make just on the strength of maybe a couple yeah. more people watch us. And, you know, most of the time, the answers are in the comments. Other people and, are actually doing it right. for us. And we've got some more important things that we want to buy, but we'll get into that maybe with another question later. Yeah, or maybe when we thank our patrons. Yes. Uh, our next question comes from Canton Call. And they say, kind of sad that people watch you guys for only glitches. Love your videos. This is another comment, but this is a, a wonderful comment. It's good that we have the, the right. NT, yeah. So this was in uh, like among a bunch of comments saying, are there new glitches on a video that had nothing to do with glitches? Yeah. So here's the thing. All right, so when we look at our channel, we've got access to a lot more information in terms of uh, the views and just analytics. And it's always been the glitches that get the most views. Mm -hmm. Um, and then after that would be gameplay videos next, right? Now we're getting as much, in the short term at least, on our Q&A and T videos compared to the gameplay videos, um, even if we expect the gameplay videos to have better longevity. So it's flipped a little bit, right? So it used to be glitches, gameplay, and then Q&A recap kind of things, and now the Q&As are our next best. Yeah. So what's interesting is that even though individually glitch videos get the most views, in aggregate, when you look at everything together, all our other videos actually make up more of the total views yeah and i think one of the things i thought about when we first started doing it because 
where we really took off, I think, was with the glitches, right? Mm -hmm. But a channel based entirely on glitches is probably, I want to say definitely, but probably unsustainable, mainly because regular content on just glitches would either be really sporadic, so it, you know it's not like you have any control and it just happens when it happens, yeah. or it'd be so repetitive, right? So you'd be saying, oh yeah, it works on 2.16, and here's a video on it. Here it works on 2.17, and that's every six weeks. Mm -hmm. And then if, or more than six weeks, sorry, every eight weeks, 10 weeks. Yeah. And if you want to do something more regular than that, then you'd, you'd be just talking about the same stuff over and over. Mm -hmm. And I, I think as far as YouTube goes, like glitches are cool, and they started our channel, and I we wouldn't be here if it weren't for them. True. But I think the amount of kind of work, the amount of, like, creation that mm. we actually put into them is a lot less than, than our other stuff. Like, this is us talking about stuff that interests us and just right. kind of thinking about things right. uh, that you guys ask us and, and kind of en engaging with you guys. And that, to me, is... I think these videos are the most fun. For, oh, for yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, like, glitches are cool. The important part is that there's a lot of people that just come to us for glitches, but more than enough people come for this kind of stuff to make it feel worthwhile to make it and allow, like, me to enjoy making it. Yes. Because this stuff is cool to do, and we get enough questions, and we have enough views and all that stuff that I don't feel like this time spent is a waste, yeah, right? So I, I don't feel like it's just for me. Okay, so what I think sometimes is harder to see when you're not where we are now is that because we don't aspire to make this a career, it, a big part of doing this is the joy of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if we were to... I, I guess it, it's reflected in the earlier question too, right? Where people think that it's just... If you can goose your views and get more views, and that'll be enough. Yeah, to that's make the it... only factor. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, it's, I, 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 because we don't really have, we're not pressured the same way to feel like we have to be, you know, like I'm doing air quotes now, successful. Yeah. We're in that niche. We're comfortable where we are. It's still a lot of fun. I'm okay with this. Yeah, this and, is actually the best part. I mean, we have we have viewers like you who not only really like our videos, but like our videos enough that when they see people just asking for, oh, for they get, glitches, they get offended on our behalf. Yeah, that they're like that, and I think like it's it's people who engage with us in really positive ways like that, and you know the the people that look like they're tuning in every week, right? The what looks like a pretty yeah. regular contingent of viewers. It's people like that that um, really add to the kind of youtuber aspect of this because it's like fun making this kind of content yeah but the the youtube experience is still a really positive one when we have uh viewers like you yeah so i think i think it's it's okay that most people only watch us for the glitches because you know i get it right the glitches yeah. are quick easy and they make a big difference to the gameplay uh yeah. i'm not gonna begrudge anybody for watching the type of content that they want to watch uh, I think what's cool is that we found enough people that don't just want to watch us for the glitches. And I think yeah. we found more than enough for, for it yeah. to be worthwhile for us for, yeah. you know, for how long we've been doing it, which yeah. is a while. And the last one, in, not the last question for this uh, episode, but the last of the series about YouTube, I think. Yeah. So this comes from Philip WS. Uh, it's W comma S. I don't know if that stands for something. Yeah. Uh, and they say, BDCKR, say injustice unfortunately is shut down. What will you guys proceed to play in entertaining your viewers? What content will you provide? Love your channel. Keep up the good work. Oh, thank you. Yeah, this is this is a cool one too because it's uh, assuming uh, that we're gonna do something afterwards There's and also life that after be and beyond injustice and also that people are gonna watch us because we're entertaining, not because we're making injustice right. videos. That's a cool sentiment, yeah. and I like that. Thank you, um, thank you, Philip. Now I had to take a quick look to be sure, but our first video on this channel was back in March 2014. So it's been just over four years since we started this. But if you go back to our original channel where we did unboxings, the first unboxing was September 2013. So that's the first video that we made that was meant for as broad an audience as it could mm -hmm. possibly reach. And I think we've had different sorts of challenges with this channel over these four plus years. But for me, the one thing that was consistently the hardest was coming up with new content on a regular basis. And originally we tried to do something every week. Yeah. And without having injustice as a starting point, I don't know if it would be possible to put out stuff that would find an audience. Like, even just as a point of discussion, right? Even though we're wandering off topic a lot more, it still comes back to 
Injustice. And yeah. Besides Injustice, I don't think we play the same things. We, I don't think we play any of the same things. Yeah. I don't know that anybody would want to watch me play Boggle online or Scrabble online. Yeah, and um, I mean, we did some videos of me playing games. We did um, we had some Call of Wars videos. Dying Light. Dying Light. Uh, little stuff here and there. And I think um, super hot. It got less views. I'm sure you know over time we could do something with it, get more views than what we had, or you know maybe not. But uh, I think we're we're pretty good at this, and I or good to the amount that we want to be. We yeah, found that's we, a good point. We that's found good how we want to make our content, and we've become competent in making the content the way that we want to. I don't think we have a voice uh, the same way with other styles of content. Right. I don't think we'd have. Uh, like a compelling reason for people to watch i think right. there's if it's literally just for us that's incredibly flattering i don't think that's a huge but, portion of our viewers but even let's say it is for us how are we going to come up with like I, I struggle with this a lot of weeks is yeah what, what's our what's the next thing right and you can see that in terms of the teams because maybe part of the struggle with teams is that we have to actually build them up a bit and augment them and you know max them yeah. out to make them interesting and here's the thing even in the short term uh, for our audience we're gonna have trouble keeping this up but we're gonna have some logistical problems that that are gonna come up later in this year where we won't be physically in the same room often enough to even continue using our current workflow the way we normally film these mm -hmm. and so we're looking at adjusting our setup and thank you a uh, big thank you to our Patreon Patron, patrons on Patreon because uh, because of them we're going to be able to buy a second mic and we're going to try to figure out some way that we can keep on doing this even when um, we're going to be separated. Yeah, so we've got the blue snowball right now and we're going to be picking up a blue Yeti and that is, it is as far as we're concerned, that's Patreon money. That's why yeah. we're buying it and yeah. it's because of, of our patrons that we were able to afford it. So huge shout out to you guys. You are, you, you've made the content, uh, you, you've, you've made us more excited about yeah. producing content and like you know uh the awareness that there are people out there that really like our stuff but also in a kind of tangible way you you funded our ability to to make the content and, and so here's the thing that wasn't originally planned right like yeah. this was we we're doing this it's we try to be tr as transparent about it as possible that that the patreon wasn't going to be something that would be directly keeping us filming but it turns out it's actually going to make a big difference yeah so it's Again, it's not. We would have figured something out. We would have just, you know, spent ad revenue or whatever. We would have done something. Or had crappier audio. Or quality. had crappier audio. We would have. We would have done something. But yeah. um, I, I think it's cool. Uh, as patrons, you can know that you are actually directly supporting, and you'll right. you'll part of our equipment for the video. Part of the reason why our videos will be the way that they are going forward is directly right. because of you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So there we go. Our next question comes from Zolo, and they say, Could you guys show us a team that guarantees you a quick online battle besides the Flashpoint team and doesn't include the Tantu Totem? I missed out on a few Flashpoint seasons, and I made the mistake of maxing Batman out without having him at the same elite as the other Flashpoints. And I've also missed the Tantu Totem because the early MP rewards glitch occurred to me when I haven't ranked high enough to obtain it. So the illusion in the thumbnail was, you know, pick two, but you can't have all three. And I'll sort of explain it a bit later, but here's the thing. Quickest, if you're, if I'm answering the question directly, quickest will always be a lower level fights with the best gear that you have. Yeah. But you're getting little battle points, which is, battle points is actually what most people want, right? Yeah, so you're getting consistently quick and easy fights, but you're not necessarily going to be grinding as efficiently. Right. And if you want max battle points, you're going to be facing tougher guys. And without Tantu Totem, it's not going to be fast because you're going to be facing not only higher stack guys, but you're more likely to be facing Astro Harness. You're more likely to be facing Tantu Totem yourself. And you just can't kill time by doing specials because it costs power to do that. Yeah, but with the Tantu Totem, you can totally just special, exactly. special, special. Right. And gear is crucial for MP. And the Tantu Totem, to me, is still one of the three most important pieces of gear. Yeah. And here's the thing, the Flashpoint team has probably the best synergy, mainly because of Batman's destructive blows, so the damage output is huge. The same way the Tantu Totem increases your damage output because you're doing a whole bunch more specials than you would otherwise, right? Yeah. So another team could be another team besides Flashpoint could be just as good, but you'd need optimized gear, and like you said, you're missing it. And mm -hmm. if we're talking speed, I don't think there is a substitute for the damage output from specials. Um, and there definitely isn't a substitute for the extra crit damage that comes from Flashpoint's destructive blows. So you want fast, you want to have no Flashpoint, you want to have no Tantu Totem. I think really the best you can do is pick two out of those three. 
Yeah. And then uh, you go from there, but... Uh, or go lower stats and just go a little uh, fast fights, but slower grinding. Right, exactly. So no flashpoint, no tantu. Okay, you can still be fast. Yeah. But it, you're going to miss have it some trade-offs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There we go. And our next question comes from Dylan Mobile. And he says, hi, me again. I love this team now. He's talking about the Man of Steel team mm, with yeah. the third wheel. I've won 128 times consecutive in a multiplayer. But instead of Elseworld Flash, I use Metahuman Flash due to both damage and health are identical with the Man of Steel team. I was wondering if you guys think it's a good setup due to the limited gears I have. I use an Elite 4 Metahuman Flash with all basic damage deal increase, Man of Steel General Zod with Scarecrow Vent Mask, Astro, and Fourth World Chest, while Man of Steel Superman has the Ibistick, Death Cart, and Tantu Totem. Standing by for your thought, and I wish they had a glitch on how to demote characters like before. Much love, BDCKR. Much love right back at you. <laughs> Um, so this is an interesting question. This was, sorry, so the, it's a, the Men of Steel, uh, and the third wheel. The broader question is, is your team good? Best way to judge whether your team is good or not is whether you're winning or not. Yeah, and you are winning a lot. Yeah, and here's the thing. Your loadout on Man of Steel Superman is exactly the same, and he's the most important thing on the team, right? He does the most damage, so there, in most fights, there's a good chance you won't need anybody else. Yeah. Uh, in... On Zod, who's your tank, you've instead of fourth world helmet, you've swapped it out for Scarecrow's mask. And mm -hmm. what you're giving up is the gear set ability of reviving. Uh, you're giving up the blocking boost. You, you, those matter for your tank. Power generation doesn't matter, so you give up doesn't don't don't really care. Yeah. Because his specials are kind of weak anyways. Yeah. And by switching out to the Scarecrow, you're getting the reflecting 40% of block specials, which is sort of like Flashpoint Aquaman's passive. Yeah. Um, which is good. Uh, negating heal, it doesn't seem like it would make much of a difference because you've got to time it right because it's time limited. And if the AI doesn't see his own team, it makes zero difference. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, if you're going to swap, not use the helmet and give up on the revive... Actually, I wonder if they do make it so that the AI doesn't swap like swap out in the same way that they would if they can't see their team. If they swap out randomly when they win otherwise. I think they swap out randomly anyways is the thing. Yeah, I know. Um, it's possible. <laughs> So if you like reflecting specials, um, my preference is for Static's Charge Disc. So you get the blocking boost back, plus 20% chance to reflect all of a special. So it's not as good as 40% of every special, but I've gotten burned more than once when I was facing uh, Static with my Ares, and he had Charge Disc, and he reflected all of my special back at me, and it left me with one health. Hmm. And th those are usually builds where Ares is the main guy. Yeah, so I guess the long and the short of it is, it's not rocket science. You're winning and you're doing good and you like the team. I would say that's a good team. Yeah, exactly. I would say you don't need us to weigh in. Yeah. Um, it's, it sounds like what you've got there is a team that you enjoy playing yeah. and that you're successful with, and that's the most important thing. All right, so that's it for the questions, but I wanted to save a little bit of time. we got two more fights left. Mm -hmm. In case anyone wasn't paying attention, we'll point out that we're, we've gone back to our classic Elseworld Flash, Containment Doomsday, and Regime Green Lantern team, which we used for, I want to say, years. Yeah. But it was a long time, and the only thing we've done differently is instead of gearing uh, Containment Doomsday to be our basic damage dealer, we've geared him to be our specials specialist. Mm -hmm. And why it matters a little bit is, I guess we could have... We need a tank, for sure. Um, we need somebody who can bide a little bit of time, so it was a question of who is going to be a special specialist. Because Containment Doomsday has the one-hit special one... That was mainly the, the difference, but the problem with Flash a little bit in being our basic damage dealer is that because we want to keep hyperspeed uh, plated suit, it's because it's his own gear that gives him the ability to do un, um, unblockable hits Yeah. that we're giving up the chance to goose his uh, basic damage a little bit. Um, and I like ooh, ouch, um, the Flash's swipe combo better, but Containment Doomsday could be just as good um, if you wanted to gear him the same. Mm. The reason why I don't want to do both as basic damage dealers is because I hate giving up the Tantu Totem. The Tantu, like we mentioned earlier, the Tantu Totem has the potential to increase your damage output so much that if you don't use it, you're you're spending a lot more time fighting than you need to. Yeah, for sure. But you can also see where the problem is. On a team with Killer Frost, we get the one bar for sure. The second bar we don't get as much. Uh, we can't make the second bar because her sort of... What's the word when she stunts our power generation? 
That stunts not the right word. It's uh, inhibits. Yeah. When she uh, slows her power generation, mm-hmm. it means you come up with one bar, so it gives you a little bit less flexibility in terms of you know if you want to kill time, you do two special ones in a row, and then that gives you a chance to swap somebody else in. Mm. Um, but it's still really really good. Yeah, and I think now's a good time. Uh, we've been getting a lot. I don't know. We we always get a decent amount, but I've noticed it recently. We've getting a lot of like really cool, really positive people coming in and just thanking us for the content we made, just saying some really nice stuff. And uh, I know those are the kinds of people that are more likely to be watching this point of the video. Yeah. So I just want to say thank you to all you guys. It's uh, it's been really really nice. Yep. And we're we're really thankful for you people. There's no like specific milestone well, that, or that, anything. But that's the biggest reason why we keep on doing this, right? Yeah. Because that's part of the joy. Yeah. But so I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to say that because uh, I don't I don't think there's a different format where we could. Yeah. But just like you guys are cool, and and we like you a lot, yep. and we appreciate you, and uh, thanks. You, uh, you make it worthwhile um, continuing to make content. That was a nice way to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Or, oh, I want to point out too, the part of uh, having the Astro Harness is you want to control when you have your first invulnerability, so that's why I try to avoid having Astro Harness in first slot. And that was it. There we go. So, uh, a big thank you to, uh, to everybody for watching, but an especial... A special, e special, uh, a special thank bonus you. Bonus second thank you. Um, yeah, for our uh, patrons. patrons. Yeah, Alberto Junior Camarillo, I Profit Lane, and now Daniel Simonson, our most recent addition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there we go. That's this. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Komoda. Komoda.